Glory to God. I feel the anointing today. Awesome, awesome, awesome day. Power of God going to be strong today. The power of God is strong today. Hey, blessings everyone. Greetings to you today. Nice to see everyone. We give God praise for what he's doing. Jesus, we thank you today. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in our life. We give you praise. We give you glory. Jesus, I welcome you. And I give you all the glory for what you're doing in our life, what you're going to do in our life. I give you praise from this moment forth. Lord, I pray a special blessing upon those watching this broadcast. Now, saints, bless everybody. Greetings to you. Now, saints, I'm stirred up. I'm on fire. I'm going to be on here real shortly. Um, I'm going to be on here real shortly. But I wanted to share this with you because it's, it's strong on my heart. Saints, there are zones in the anointing. Sometimes I wake up very stirred up. My, my heart is on fire because I'm hearing God say a lot of things to me that are meaningful. Not only in my decision making, but in your decision making. It's not only just for my benefit, but it's for your benefit. Like saints, you have to get the revelation that Jesus has a desire every day to fulfill your desire. But the question is, do you have a desire every day to fulfill his desire? Now, saints, I'm not going to be on here too long, but I just want to share this with you. Jesus has a desire every day to fulfill your desire. But do you have a desire every day to fulfill his desire? I want to talk to you about seven wealth secrets. Seven wealth secrets. Why? Because saints, when we deal with the area of wealth, wealth is so vast. Wealth has so many dimensions to it. Wealth is a manifold grace of God. A manifold is, is a manifold dimension of God. Wealth carries so many aspects of Jesus. Wealth is actually a gift from God, is a is a blessing, is something that has been assigned to your life and your inheritance. Meaning the Lord wants you to have it. He wants you to be wealthy in relationships, wealthy in your prayer life, wealthy in your anointing, wealthy in your worship, wealthy in your understanding, wealthy in your uh your decision making, wealthy in your finances financial wealth is a major part of god and god has been wanting to get financial wealth to so many people for years for ages but because of religiosity tradition it, it quenches that anointing but that, uh, that anointing is being restored back to the body of christ the woman of god the man of god especially those that have been called by the name of god because of the assignment and, and the things that are uh going forth in the earth to be fulfilled for the coming of Jesus. Wealth is our anointing that's being restored back uh, to those that are in a secret place with Jesus. Why? Because it's a reward for your sanctification. It's a reward for you making a decision that you want to follow the plan of God for your life. Wealth is actually a blessing from God when you leave everything behind. I want you to hear me, saints. You must understand this because me as a man of God, I don't just preach this thing. I live this thing. Wealth is a reward for leaving behind everything for the cause of Christ Jesus. Leaving behind everything for the Lord Jesus Christ. And saints, the reason why a lot of people don't walk in divine wealth is because they're not willing to leave behind things for Jesus. Things that you leave behind for Jesus will be restored back unto you. You must know this. You never lose. You just gain more than what you thought that you had you never lose you just gain more than you thought that you had god is in a transaction business saints i want you to hear me transaction is a compound word transaction transaction 
So saints, God cannot give you a transaction until your action is on obedience. God cannot give you a transaction until your action is in surrender. God cannot give you a transaction until your action is in submission. So a transaction requires your action. A transaction requires your action. Now, saints, hold on. I'm not paying on lipstick. <laughs> These are my real lips. My real lips. Okay? Uh, do a little commercial for the chapstick. Listen, I'm not paying on lipstick. All right? <laughs> I don't wear makeup. Okay? Just hold on and be strong. Because my best friend always telling me, Thompson, do you know the white? I said, the white who? The white around your lips. Listen, you ain't. So I'm bent on my chapstick. Don't hate. <laughs> this ain't no lipstick. But saints, wealth is a gift of God. Wealth is a gift from God. And what wealth does is it gives you. <laughs> Saints, a lot of people, they love them. They, <laughs> they love their leader having crustiness all around them. <laughs> Saints, a lot of people, they love leaders when the leader crusty and the, the leader head nappy and the leader up there looking all like he came out of the wilderness. They love that. They be like, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But then when the leader up there. Now, saints, wealth is a gift from God. And wealth is a reward for you leaving behind everything that Jesus has called you to leave behind. Now, saints, I want you to hear me. When Jesus tells you to leave behind things, he's not actually telling you to leave it behind for the sake that you're going to lose it. But he's telling you to leave it behind because he's saying, listen, I got something better for you. Now, wealth is the fruit of sacrifice in the spirit. Now, saints, I want you to hear me. There is a fleshly sacrifice and there is a spiritual sacrifice. Now, a lot of people are used to the natural, the, the fleshly sacrifice. Now, watch this, saints. There is no reward for the fleshly sacrifice. As a matter of fact, the fleshly sacrifice just leaves you weary. Now, saints, this is a good behind day. Saints, listen, I'll be about my father's business every day of my life. Saints, I just got the conference set. Okay? Um, I'm in works for the conference, the Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference. It's gonna be amazing, saints. Right after my birthday, I'm in negotiation and I'm settling things around today and this week. Um, I'm excited about these meetings because Jesus told me he's gonna be there and the power of God gonna hit as always. And there's gonna be such a dimension of, of tangible presence. Now, those of you all that ever came to my meeting, you can feel the tangibility of Jesus when you walk in. Just walking into the place, you can feel the tangibility of Jesus. Now, saints, it's so powerful because I feel that same tangibility throughout my day as I fellowship with the Lord, as I talk with the Lord, as I obey the Lord. Saints, a lot of times Jesus tell me to do things that are uncommon, things that are not the usual. And I do it. I don't give him no trouble. I don't give him no lip. And saints, that's what increases your rank in the spirit. Even when you obey God, when you don't feel like it, even when you do what God tells you to do, when your flesh is telling you not to. So saints, there's a reward for, for spiritual sacrifice. Wealth is a reward for spiritual sacrifice. Now, saints, we're doing a lot of things today. And so while I'm handling business, I'm, I'm making time to speak to the family of God, to speak to you all, my family, and pour into you because this is important to me. 
that as God raises my level in him, that he raises your level also. My purpose for ministry is to see other people receive the impartation that I have. Jesus said, freely you have received, freely give. So that the purpose of ministry to keep yourself fresh is where you let God pour into you and let God use you to pour into others. I'm talking about seven wealth secrets here. One of the secrets that you must understand if you're going to walk in covenant wealth, divine wealth, and saints, if you're on this line, write me, divine wealth, divine wealth is different from the wealth of the wicked. You see that there are the wealth of the wicked. So that shows us that um, that shows us that when we deal with the wealth of the wicked, I had to take my own screenshot. <laughs> when we deal with the wealth of the wicked, the wealth of the wicked is a realm where um, there is illegal money. The wealth of the wicked, <laughs> the wealth of the wicked is where there's um, illegal wealth. Now, illegal wealth, illegal money is when I obtain money and the Holy Spirit is not leading me to obtain money. Or I obtain prosperity um, and God is not giving me that prosperity. I'm getting it illegally. Divine wealth is when the Holy Spirit gives me wisdom and I start obeying God and he starts giving me money as a reward. Now, God really created money to be a reward system to the saints. And the level of your money was really supposed to uh, be a reward for the level of your obedience. The level of your money was really supposed to be a reward for the level of your obedience. Meaning what God would say, okay, Abraham, I want you to leave your father's house. You leave, he leave his father's house and then here God blesses him. Then he goes with where the king is and he tells the king, this is my sister. After he tells the king, this is my sister, the Bible said that the king gave him all this money. What happened? God was rewarding Abraham for his obedience, but it was sacrificial obedience. He had to leave um, his, his uh, father's house. Then he had to leave. <laughs> he had to leave uh, things behind for the sake of Christ. So that's the sacrifice that God does to release wealth to you. When you find that the Lord is separating you from family, um, uh, he, he's separating you from uh, people that you called your friends. When you see that he's separating you from people you went to church with. When you see that God starts separating you from uh, bad habits, smoking, drinking, fornication, lust. When you see him in a sanctification process, it's because he's ready to release wealth on your life. You don't want sin operating in your life because it'll stop the wealth. You don't want sin operating in your life because it'll stop the wealth. It'll stop your money flowing, God. Because what happened is the Bible said that he that hides in sin cannot prosper. When you get to that realm where sin is operating in your life and you are not uh, being obedient to God, you open up doors for wealth to be delayed. So God want to give you abundance. That's the plan of God. Religious people have tried to preach against it, but there's no scriptural reference nor e e either mental reference. Because saints, that's stupid. How could Satan give his children millions of dollars and God say that he love you, he is love, and that he don't want you to have millions. He don't want you to have thousands. He don't want you to have abundance. That doesn't make sense. When Satan is a hateful person, he desired to take everybody to hell. It wouldn't make sense for Satan to be someone that's always given surplus to his children. But God loves you. He died for you on the cross. And then you're saying that he doesn't want you to have surplus. It doesn't make sense at all. 
And saints, the scripture references Psalm 112 verse 3. He said wealth and riches was going to be in your house. So that means to tell you that even if you don't have wealth and riches, and even if you don't have a house, you're going to have a house. Because it said wealth and riches shall be in your house. So the Bible even lets you know that God is saying, listen, daughter, you might be in an apartment today, but you're going to have a house. Listen, son, you might be in an apartment today, but you're going to have a house. This is my plan for you. Ah! Oh! God was telling you in the text. You ain't going to be up there living around these apartment people. Up there walking through the hallway, smelling like fish all around the hallway. Bad fish and oil and whatnot. Up there smelling like old donuts and smelling like old crab meat up there blessed be god you walk into an apartment and up there children running around looking all crazy and whatnot girls running around looking all crazy and whatnot and then you up there ain't got no privacy that ain't your future up there walk around one apartment door smelling like weed smelling like cigar weed smelling like tweed and creed no longer there's a place Stop making me laugh. There's a place in God where those days are gone forevermore. Now, saints, don't, 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 uh, don't forget. Now, you be thankful where you are. I, I'm not saying that, saints. I, I'm, I'm really joking around. But what I'm telling you is, there's a place, saints. I ain't studying you. I'm at the car wash. <laughs> the car wash since I go to the car wash listen I'm at the car wash enjoy myself um I'm talking about there's a house that God has for you on the earth if you take a note write that down I want you if you take a note write that down there's a house that God has for you on the earth there's a house and a spouse that God has for you on the earth always remember that this man taking too long. Since you get to a certain realm, you don't like waiting on folk. <laughs> I don't like waiting on nobody, man. Got time for this mess. Item any How you doing, brother? Man, another day. Can't complain too much. You remember you paid for me last time? Was, was that you? <laughs> yeah. You remember that? No. That was that was one time your machine was bootlegged, so. Oh, it was, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Well, I appreciate you sliding on through today. Absolutely. I'm gonna help Bless you. Today. Let me get, let me get this. Up. What you want, the 15? Yeah. Yeah. Would you, you like to upgrade your, your bar? Um, yeah, yeah. All right, let me 17 today. Okay. Please select additional services or credit. Yeah, Saints, hold on. Please pay with either credit card I'm at the, or cash. I'm at car wash. Busy day today. Go ahead, put it on video camera. Can you reach it? You got it. Man, up. Oh, your change is gonna come out right here. Hold on, Saints. I'm up. Hold on. Please pull forward. You. Thank you. And then you actually do got another free wash. You can redeem it within five days. Oh really? Free seven or pay the difference on ten or fifteen. So I got a free wash? Yes, sir. Oh. Redeem it within, within five days. Thank you. Okay, yeah, appreciate So it. I got a free wash. Next time, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, like a rain check. Man, I'm telling you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, stop by. I'm cool. I got a free wash. That's what you said. Saints, miracles just be happening all the time. Listen. I don't know. I don't know what be wrong with people. Anybody put their mouth on me, listen, something wrong with you. <laughs> something wrong with you. I I get miracles I ain't even asking for. I ain't broke. I can play this card watch. But saints, listen, we getting back to um We getting back to uh We getting back to um this thing. Now, saints, when we deal, when we deal with, um, when we deal with 
with wealth, God uses spiritual sacrifice. Thank you. Have a good one. You too, brother. <laughs> check it, check it. Uh, when you deal with wealth, look, saints, I done turned blue in here, saints. Look at this here. Saints, I'm trying to tell you, saints, look at all this here. This, look at the water. Look at the water, saints. This, Okay. Um, when we deal with well, when you deal with well, uh, you deal with a place. I was like, why my car stopped? Saints, I was like, listen, Saints, I thought I was going to get hemmed up just now. I thought just now that I was going to go see Jesus. <laughs> Saints, come my car just stopped out of nowhere. It just stopped out of nowhere. So Saints, when we deal with wealth, it takes spiritual sacrifice. Now, Saints, I want you to see this. If you go to Genesis, you'll find that Cain was offering up a fleshly sacrifice. There's a difference between fleshly sacrifices and spiritual sacrifices. The fleshly sacrifice... Saints, I'm the only prophet you know that's up there in the washer <laughs> on Periscope. Listen, when you deal with the fleshly sacrifice, this is what Cain was offering up to God and God wouldn't receive it. So saints, that means that uh, there are uh, phys fleshly sacrifices that God will not receive. Meaning that if you do it, God won't take it. If you do it, God will not receive it. As a matter of fact, a lot of people are doing this. That's why they're so weary. They're so tired. Because saints, when you do fleshly sacrifice, it's you trying to please God in the way that you believe he will accept. And saints, that's a waste of time. You don't want to try to please God in the way that you think he can be pleased. Let me give you a secret. Don't waste time trying to please God. Because if you're trying to please God, most likely you will not please him. Spend your time finding out what God wants you to do to please him. When you find out what God wants you to do to please him, then you won't waste unnecessary sacrifice, which leads to disappointment which causes you to get angry at God and frustrated with God as if he's not paying you any mind. A lot of times people do fleshly sacrifice and it causes them to be uh, make God their enemy because the fleshly sacrifices releases you into weariness. And when your spirit gets weary, your spirit gets frustrated. When your spirit gets frustrated, you make God your enemy. Always remember that. When you um, get frustrated, you make God your enemy. And now God has been taken from his rightful place of being a good God. And now you have exalted Satan as if he's good. And saints, you, you low key uh, shade in God. There are some people that shade God. You shade God, why? Because you don't want to give him no praise. That's why I said, I can't stand people that always God say something big, they're up there talking some amen. That's all you got to say to God. Some amen, that's God up there talking so he going to bless you and favor you. You up there talking some amen. That's all you got for God? God, he ain't got to he ain't got to bless you. He ain't got to show you no love. He can go on by his business and and and, and keep it moving. But he telling you, "Listen, I'm a, I'm a grace you. I'm a favor you. I'm going to let you get married. I'm going to let you have sex." Listen. I don't know why church up there always trying to trying to shade sex. God created sex. Not no Trey songs. God created sex. You 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 need to get up and you you need to get out of the amen stage. Get into the glory stage. Hallelujah. Praise God. Get into something else. Give God a different type of praise.
God tired of that little amen. God told us he gonna bless you, cancel your debt. You up there told us, amen. Amen. God tired of that. He want to hear some glory. Hallelujah. Power. In Jesus' name. He want to hear something different. Says that's poor. Money coming to me now. Saints, wherever you are in this line, just receive it all this week. That's saints. I'm not just saying this, man. When I when I'm saying this, there's angels being released. There's angels being released. There's angels being released. There's angels being. I feel it. Money cometh to me now, saints. I'm not talking about. No money coming to your auntie. We're not dealing with auntie. We're not dealing with sister. We're not dealing with brother. You need to start personalizing the anointing on your life. Start personalizing the promise of God for your life. Look, somebody said, I got to check $9,000. Oh my God. Oh my God. Listen, money flowing. Somebody write me. Money moving. Money moving. Money moving. Somebody write me. Somebody. Ah. Ah! Somebody write me. Money moving. Money moving. Come on, saints. Come on, saints. Money coming to me now, saints. Come on, saints. Come on, saints. Money moving. Money moving. Money moving. Listen. Write your testimony. Write your testimony. Money, money, money moving. Write your testimony. Who said? Who said they got a check? For $9,000. A daughter of my ministry. She following the prophet. I'm her prophet. Money moving, money moving, money moving. Money moving, money moving, money moving. Saints, listen. God can use anybody. At any time. From anywhere. Anywhere. To bless your life You don't have to be somebody That knows everybody God knows everybody Ruth did not know Boaz All Ruth knew was Naomi Naomi was broke Ruth was broke But God Because she followed The divine instruction God linked her to Boaz Listen I prophesy to you that whether you are a man or a woman, you are about to meet your Boaz. Whether you be a man or a woman, you are about to meet your Boaz. And you, some, some of y'all say, listen, how could you say, prophet, that I'm a man and I'm going to meet my Boaz? Because listen, Boaz was a financial deliverer. Some of y'all need financial deliverance. You're not going to be sleeping with Boaz. Boaz, some of y'all going to meet your Boaz that come into your life for business purposes. Some of you are going to see some of y'all never heard this before. You're going to meet your Boaz for, for business purposes. You're going to meet your Boaz to buy your house. You're going to meet your Boaz to give you financial favor. You're going to meet your Boaz to help you get that car. Hey! Hey! Macarana na maso con Listen, there's a miracle coming to you, Cheryl Bivens. God said multi-millionaire status is on the brink of your life. Rock, uh, uh, what was his name? Macarana da Basia. I heard God told me, he said, Tell Rock, Rockiel, Rock, Rockwell, Rock, Rockiel, Armandele oh, Osia. Tell her that this is her time for her miracle. Tell her that this is the time for her miracle. Tell Raquel, this is the time for her miracle. You about to move, Raquel, in the prophetic. You about to move in my same anointing. What you think gonna happen? There's something popping off today. Hey, there's something popping off today. There's something popping off today. 
Apostolic anointing is popping off today. You about to move in apostolic grace. What? My God, saints. There's an apostolic grace coming on your life tonight. There's an apostolic grace coming upon your life at midnight tonight. There's an apostolic grace coming upon your life right now in this land. Some of y'all going to receive it this evening. Some of y'all going to receive it tonight. God about to change your story. Hear me in the spirit. God about to change your story. God about to change your story. Wherever you are. What? A apostolic grace about to come on you. A supernatural anointing about to come on you. Wherever you are. The saints, the devil can't hold you down. Who is the devil? I don't know that nigga. I done beat that nigga down. Listen, the devil is dead, man. The devil is dead. His funeral done happen a long time ago. When the prophet stepped on the scene. When the apostolic stepped on the scene. When the glory stepped on the scene. The devil dead. The devil dead. He ain't got no power. Jesus on the throne. You moving with a supernatural Jesus. This is a supernatural kingdom. This is a supernatural anointing. This is a supernatural power. What devil is this? We ain't looking at no devil. The devil done defeated. We done crushed his hand. Now it's time for you to take authority. Now it's time for you to move with the grace of God. What you scared of Satan for? Ain't no Satan can stop your money. Ain't no Satan can stop your healing. Ain't no Satan that can stop your marriage. Ain't no Satan can stop your deliverance. Ain't no Satan that can stop your mind, stop your peace, stop your joy, stop your freedom, your liberty, your worship, your praise, your glory, your honor, your favor. No more devil going to be operating in your life. We don't crush the head of the serpent. What are you going to do? We done bust the devil in his head. He needs to recover by now. He done messing with somebody else. He not messing with you. You underneath the anointing. We cross his head. The seed. Her seed shall crush the head of the serpent. That's what Genesis said. Jesus was that seed. God sowed the seed of Jesus into the earth. And crushed every demonic power. You ain't sick no more because the seed of Jesus, the seed called Jesus, crushed the head of the serpent. Ain't no devil in hell can stop you today. I feel it. Somebody said a person had two cars and they gave me one of the cars. What? What? Listen, I declare this week a week of miracles. I declare this week in the name of Jesus, underneath the prophetic and apostolic authority that you gave me, Jesus. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Matala Masia. I decree and I declare this week is a week of financial favor. This week is a week of wealth. This week is a week. When nobody listening to this broadcast going to be weak financially. You're not going to be weak provisionally. You're not going to be weak materialistically. No! No! The Holy Ghost going to do it for you. We ain't worried about no demon spirit. Them demons got to go. Them demons done running away. Them demons trying to run away from you. They don't want to be by you. Them demons running. There made me preach my curly fries. Listen. Made me preach my curly fries. What? Then made me preach my curly fries. All financial demons be destroyed in your life in Jesus name. Every spirit that been assigned to stop your provision. I command that demon to die by fire in Jesus name. Every evil spirit that want to stop you from living in happiness. Stop you from living in prosperity. Stop you from living an abundant life. Stop you from moving in wealth and riches. In the name of Jesus, I command that demon to be broken. 
Devil don't want you to come out. Devil wants you to be stuck with this sob story all the days of your life. How you doing? I'm holding on. Since I done left holding on. Since you enter a realm with people up there holding on to you. <laughs> There's some people up there holding on, holding on. There's some people that God done anointed you for people to hold on to you. They holding on to you, holding on. You are about to hold your miracle. You are about to hold your miracle. You are about to hold your finances. You are about to hold your healing. The devil can't hold you up no more. I refuse to be stopped. I refuse to be delayed. I refuse to have no lid over my life. Not underneath the apostolic anointing of Jesus. Saints, if you're on this line, write me. I will not lack underneath this apostolic anointing. I want you to write me. Write me. I will not lack underneath this apostolic anointing. I will not lack underneath this apostolic anointing. Grace of God about to take you to another level. The devil is a liar. Up there trying to scare the saints. Ain't no devil going to scare you up in this generation. You ain't scared of no bald-headed demon up there roaming around. Acting like they got power up there tricking you. Up there speaking in your end. Telling you all these lies. Making you not do what God tell you to do. Up there all fearful and worried. Lord, what am I going to do next? Ah, they told me this. The, God, the devil is a liar. Whose report will you believe? You believe God a man. You won't have to trust God at one point. You keep listening to these demon spirits up there lying in your ear. They're going to stop you from your money. Stop you from your prosperity. You trying to save your life. God told you to lose it. He said if you lose your life, you'll find it in me. Why people can't find their financial life? Why? Because you got to lose your, your financial life in him first. Why people can't find their married life? Because you got to lose your life in Jesus first to find that married life. You got to lose your life in Jesus to find prosperity. For you to find wealth, you got to lose. Remember, we talk about transaction. Remember, we talked about transaction. Remember, we talked about transaction. For you to receive the transaction, you got to let there be an action, an action of faith, an action of obedience, an action of worship, an action of unselfishness. Don't be afraid of no demon, woman of God. Gird up your mind today. Say, Jesus, listen, I receive your wisdom. Tell them. I receive understanding. I receive knowledge. Whatever you want me to do, Jesus, I follow you. I pit my trust in you. Speak to me, Lord. I'll obey you. I don't care no more. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. I done lived my whole life listening to my flesh. I done lived my whole life listening to my intellect. I still ain't got what I'm supposed to have. I'm still not where I'm supposed to be. I'm still not married to who I'm supposed to marry. I'm still not obtaining what I'm supposed to obtain. Jesus, I listen to you now. You got to get to that point, woman of God. No devil in hell gonna stop you. Now underneath this apostolic Lord, the devil is a liar. Ain't no demon. I found out the devil got all this mouth, always talking and talking. Ain't no devil can stop you when you listen to God. When you make up in your mind, you're gonna follow the Holy Ghost. You ain't gonna let no evil spirit come speak in your ear. You're gonna let the anointing have its way with you. You're gonna follow God and follow God and follow God. It don't matter what you see, hear, or feel. You're gonna follow the Lord Jesus Christ. You're gonna let your flesh die. You're gonna let your spirit begin to operate. You're gonna let your mind be crucified and let the mind of Christ rule and reign in you. You're going to follow the divine instructions of God and you're going to receive everything that God has for you. This is your time. 
This last day of July is the last day the devil going to have a right to dominate you with a lie. This last day of July is the last day that the devil going to be able to dominate you with a lie. His days of lying to you are over. The days of witchcraft is over. Listen, I command all financial witchcraft to be destroyed and broken off of your life in the name of Jesus. I command all, I heard the Holy Ghost say that. I heard, uh, I heard the Holy Ghost say that. All financial witchcraft operating against your life. In the name of Jesus, I command it to be broken. I cancel financial witchcraft. Every spirit of witchcraft operating against your provision. Every spirit of witchcraft operating against your success. Saints, some of you all, you don't know why you're not successful. You don't know why things not happening for you. It's because of witchcraft. But in the name of Jesus, I command every form of witchcraft operating against your finances, your provision, your success, your progress, your acceleration, I command it to be broken in the name of Jesus right now. Saints, wherever you are, I want you to touch my hand on the screen right now, just as a point of contact. God had actually told me, son, he said, son, I have wanted you, but it's okay. We ain't got to talk about it, but I'll do it at the meeting. I'll do it at my meeting. Um, but the Lord told me to move in point of contact more. That's what Jesus told me. Use point of contact more. Saints, I, I, I had a bag, or actually, uh, I think some of you are my, uh, my family. I think it was a uh, prophetess Angela or a prophetess April. You gave me a bag for my baby. It was a powerful bag. Uh, beautiful bag. And so, when I got the bag, <clears throat> I gave it to my baby. But when I was in the airport, the Holy Ghost told me, he said, son, transfer the anointing to your bag. And I transferred while, while I was walking. I didn't care who was watching. I said, in the name of Jesus, I transfer my anointing to my bag right now that when my daughter touch it, the power of the Holy Ghost on my life will come upon her. The same spirit of Jesus that saw me will come upon her. I transfer the prophetic grace. I transfer it in the name of Jesus. Saints, I got my bag. I transferred it, hold on to it, and transferred the anointing. When I put the bag, put it right there. It was underneath her stroller. Saints, while, while, while I was talking to my baby, because she understand, her eyes was opening up wide. And saints, she up there started scringing up her little feet. <laughs> And so cute up there she had her little feet together and it was up there and she was looking at me and smiling my little baby <laughs> and saints God told me he said son I want you to move more in the point of contact those of you all that come to this JHM meeting they, there will be all in the meeting, okay? There will be all, not only spiritual all that I'm going to be moving in, but there will be physical all that I will have at the meeting, okay? Have this all at the meeting. And whether you get a drop or whatever, I'm going to be anointing those that want to be anointed with all. You're not going to be forced, ain't going to be no shenanigans, if you want the anointing and the all, the point of contact, I'm going to be releasing it on your life. That you may have the same realm of Jesus that's in me, that's upon me, that it will function on you and even greater. May God take you stronger. May God take you higher. May God lift, lift, lift you into another realm of Jesus. It's time for it. Saints, if you're on this line, write me. I want Jesus. I want Jesus. 
saints, wealth comes when all you want is Jesus. Wealth comes when all you want is Jesus. God will bless you with wealth when he see that your heart is in the right place. You ain't studying all, 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 all what other people talking about. You are focusing on Jesus, his plan for your life, his will for your life. That's what it's all about. Saint Seven Wealth Secrets. Number one, understand spiritual sacrifice. Spiritual sacrifice Um, spiritual sacrifice is when I obey the Holy Spirit concerning instructions. You do fleshly sacrifice, you'll weary yourself. I was trying to find a scripture. Um, I was trying to find a scripture so you can see in the word. Um, I, 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 want, I want you to see this. Look what the Bible say in Proverbs 15, 19. Proverbs 15, 19. It says the way of the slothful man is as an hedge of thorns. The way of a slothful man is as an hedge of thorns. That means that you're hedged with thorns. What does this mean? Thorns in scripture represent the curse. So slothfulness, it means that now I have slowed down on God. Slothfulness means I'm no longer diligent about divine instructions. I'm no longer sowing. I'm no longer praying. I'm no longer worshiping. I'm no longer using the knowledge of God. Saints, when you get slothful, you enter into the curse of sin. That's why people are struggling with sin today, because of slowfulness. Meaning, you know you got, you know you got weapons. You know the blood of Jesus is a weapon. You know the name. And saints, I heard somebody, I heard somebody on Facebook. They was talking about the blood of Jesus. They said, "Where is pleading the blood in the scripture?" Stupid. It ain't gotta be in no scripture, man. You talking about the blood of Jesus? Where, where is it scripture? Why, 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 why people pleading the blood? Listen, the blood is a weapon. Saints, that's why some of y'all on Facebook, you be liking all type of posts. Be careful the posts you like. You you listen to the posts of some of these people, you're you going to be posted up on the devil's kingdom. Because you coming into agreement with stupid. The people up there be writing all type of stuff on Facebook. I see some of my people up there be liking that stuff. You like you like you like this stupid stuff. These people up there, these people ain't ain't preaching the doctrine of Christ. They're preaching the doctrine of devils. Not everybody. I'm talking about some people. Saints, man, tell us something. Where's this in the Bible that we plead the blood? It's not biblical for us to plead the blood. What? I wanted to write him, nigga, it's not, it's not biblical for you not to plead the blood. <laughs> the jackass in this. Now, when we go to Proverbs chapter 15, verse 19, it said the way of a slothful man is as a hedge of thorns. So it means that when I get slothful and I don't do what Jesus tell me to do, I operate in a place where I allow thorns. I allow curses to hedge me in. I allow curses to surround me. I, I allow curses to embody my life. I allow curses to uh, invade my life. But it comes from slowfulness, meaning I'm not using the knowledge of God, nor am I pursuing God. Saints, when you stop pursuing God, you endanger your soul. If you take a note, write that down. When you stop pursuing God, you endanger your soul. You endanger your soul. You allow your soul to come into a place where demons can fight your soul. Saints, don't do that, please. I, 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 I beg you by the mercies of God, do not get lazy on Jesus. I beg you, daughters, sons, don't do that. 
Don't get lazy on Jesus. Don't get lazy and think that you arrived at the place where you don't need to get yourself more in worship, more in praise, more in thanksgiving, more in communication. Do not get lazy on Jesus because when you do, demons will begin to hedge you in with low-key curses. Things will start operating in your life that you don't want to happen. And it's not that God wants it to happen, but it's because you got slowful. It's because you got lazy. It's because you're no longer operating in what you know to do. Now demons can operate in your life financially. If you stop sowing seed, demons going to fight you financially. And you're not going to have any spiritual authority to stop them. And God cannot help you. If you stop sowing seed... You allow demons, canker worms, palmer worms, locusts, and caterpillar to invade your financial life. And God can't help you. Though he love you, he can't bless you until you operate in diligence with what you know to do. If you stop praying, the curse of temptation is going to over override your life. If you stop praying, you're going to operate in a place of lust. If you stop praying, you're going to operate in a place of vanity, vain thoughts. Different thoughts are going to take over your mind. Go to Psalm 119 verse 9. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I feel the anointing today. Hey, 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 hey. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Psalm 119 verse, verse 9. Psalm 119 verse 9. It said, how shall a young man cleanse his way but by taking heed to the word of God? So you got to take heed. What does it mean to take heed? To take heed, it means that I'm not only hearing the word, but I now I'm, I'm making steps to obey it. I'm no longer hearing the word, but I'm doing what the word is telling me to do. I'm not fighting with the word no longer. I'm not trying to find scripture to make my flesh feel good. I'm no longer trying to uh, uh, find uh, uh, reasons why I should have depression. I'm no longer looking for reasons why I should, I should uh, be complaining. I'm no longer looking for those reasons. I'm taking accountability for my soul. Saints, take accountability for your soul or you will end up in hell. Don't do it. Don't do it, saints. Don't let the devil take you out after you've been exposed to such an anointing. That's Psalm 119 verse 9. Go to Psalm 119 verse 113. I hear you. Oh, man de Leosa, I hear your Holy Ghost. Go Psalm 119 verse 9, uh, 113. Psalm 119 verse 113. Look what David said. I hate vain thoughts. But thy law do I love. Oh my God. I want you to hear this. This is real powerful. He said, I hate vain thoughts. So saints, that shows us that there are thoughts that are vain. Meaning, and why are they vain thoughts? Because saints, watch this. In your veins, there's something called blood. And saints, vain thoughts are, are thoughts that came from the blood of Adam. Ah, uh, it came from the blood of Adam. These are curse translated thoughts. These are sinful translated thoughts. These are disobedient translated thoughts. These are witchcraft translated thoughts, rebellious translated thoughts. These thoughts came from the vein of Adam. Ah, uh, I feel the anointing. Medelo Kosiara, Erebo Korama, and saints. What happens is Jesus had to shed blood from his veins to release us back into the mind of Christ. Oh, to release us back into the thought life of God, to release us back into Holy Spirit meditation. Oh, my God, to release us back into the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ. That's why Jesus had to shed his blood, because now he released us into divine vein thoughts. Now these are divine thoughts. Divine blood was shed so that now our thoughts wouldn't be vain. The same thoughts that Adam moved in. The same thoughts that Cain moved in. 
The same thoughts that the people in Noah's generation moved in. The same thoughts that Sodom and Gomorrah moved in. The same thoughts that Jezebel moved in. The same thoughts that Ahab moved in. The same thoughts that uh, uh, King Saul moved in. The same thoughts that uh, the enemies of God moved in. Pharaoh moved in. These were vain thoughts. Watch what he's saying. I'm in Psalm 119, verse 13, 113. Psalm 119, verse uh, 113. I hate vain thoughts. What he was saying, I hate the thoughts that come from the vein of Adam. I hate the thoughts that come from the blood of Adam. I hate the thoughts that come from the spirit of Adam. I hate the thoughts that come from the curse. I hate the thoughts that come from evil imagination. I hate the thoughts. Saints, that's why I made this statement the other day. You will never overcome the sin that you don't hate. The sin that you don't hate is the sin you'll never overcome. The sin that you don't hate is the sin that you'll never overcome. So Psalm 119 verse 113 said, I hate vain thoughts. So you got to hate vain thoughts. Vain thoughts is where your mind drift. Vain thoughts is when your mind entertains evil. Vain thoughts is when your mind begins to embrace demonic options. Embrace demonic conversation. Embrace demonic suggestions. Embrace demonic directions. Oh my God, I feel the anointing. Ah! Says what's going to happen to you all this week. What's going to happen to you all this week? You wearing an anointing. You're wearing an anointing. What's going to happen all this week? What the devil going to do for you? Because since you moving in a residue of apostolic anointing, you moving in a residue of prophetic grace. You moving in a residue of the blood of Jesus. You got the fullness of God. Ah. Saying Psalm 119 verse 113. He said, I hate vain thoughts. But thy law do I love. What was he saying? I want you to see this. Saints, stay with me. This is so powerful. He said, I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. Saints, watch this. He said, but thy law do I love. Saints, this was the law where I do love. Oh my God. Saints, I want you to hear me. Stay with me, man of God, woman of God. Stay with me. This is the law where I do love. Now, saints, love is something that you do. What he was saying was, the vain thoughts is stopping me from doing love. Oh my God. <laughs> the Bible said, by this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Eh? What he was telling you in the text. This vain thoughts that's in my mind is stopping me from doing love. These vain thoughts that I'm having is stopping me from operating in love. It's stopping me from moving in love. It's stopping me from loving God. It's stopping me from loving my brethren. It's stopping me from loving the word. It's stopping me from loving the Holy Ghost, loving the prophets of God, loving the apostles of God, loving the gospel of God. Ah! Yay! Makorana namasia. Rostika says, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. How many y'all you feel you you in my caranda basoko tala basia zere vedele o semandele o koramanda raba papa roste pandele o seketele ya siki rusti pandele o sekandele basia. Look what it said, John chapter fourteen verse fifteen. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. What was Psalm 119 verse 113 saying? He was saying, I hate vain thoughts because it's stopping me from keeping your commandments. I hate vain thoughts because it's stopping me from being obedient. I hate vain thoughts because it's stopping me from surrendering. It's stopping my holiness. It's stopping my, pro pro my prosperity. It's stopping my prophetic grace. It's stopping my apostolic anointing. It's stopping miracles in my life. It's stopping marriage in my life. It's stopping deliverance in my life. It's stopping healing in my life. It's stopping. But saints, I come to stop every demon that been stopping you. Every demon spirit that been stopping you. I stop it in the name of Jesus. May you go free. May you go free. In Jesus mighty name. Saints to be continued. 
seven secrets of wealth. Receive the anointing. I'm going to continue this teaching. Talk to you later on in the name of Jesus. Follow me on Facebook, Prophet Joshua Holmes, Instagram, Twitter. In Jesus' mighty name. Prophet Homies. <laughs> Bless everybody. In the name of Jesus. We bless you and we'll talk to you soon. God bless, saints. <laughs>